our last lesson for plane figures is finding perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. And the reason that this is different is because if you look at this first figure in this first example, notice that we're not given any values for any of the lengths of any of the sides, right? What we basically are gonna need to do is use the coordinate plane as a ruler to find the lengths of the sides and then maybe we can do something to find the areas of these figures. Um, and of course the perimeter as well. So it says find the perimeter and the area, oh sorry, it says classify the polygon then find the perimeter and area. Now, what you want to do is go and first of all, take a look at the number of sides and see if there's anything special. Now sometimes you can't always tell if the links of those sides are special until you actually go find them um, using some of the things that we're gonna talk about. But if I take a look at this figure right over here, I see that it's a four-sided figure. Um, none of the sides look like they're the same length and I can say that because it is on a ruler, it is on a coordinate plane. So I can say, yeah, these are not all the same length. These are not right angles. Therefore, this is just a quadrilateral. It's not special, it's just a quadrilateral. It's not a kite, it's not a trapezoid, it's just a four-sided polygon. Now, our job is to find the perimeter and the area. Now, if you were in elementary school or you were in middle school and you were first learning about this, you might be told to estimate and then you could um, count and th look at things um, and eyeball it. But we don't want to do that anymore. We want to find actual values. And you're like, whoa, how in the world am I supposed to find that length? Well, there's several ways to do it, right? We know that length is another way to say distance formula. So I could use this coordinate and this coordinate. I could um, use distance formula to find the length of that side and then the top coordinate and this over here. Again, distance formula over here. Again, distance formula and then distance formula a fourth time and then add up all of those lengths and that would find me the perimeter. That is a totally valid way. You are more than welcome to do that. But what I want to do is show you another way to find the perimeter because this other method is also going to help you find the area later. So I want to show you one method that you can use to find both perimeter and area as opposed to doing two different, um, two different approaches. I shouldn't say methods, two different approaches um, to one to find perimeter and one to find area. What you want to do is you want to create a rectangle around your whole figure, like something like this. So this is my highest point and I'm just going to create this rectangle that goes all the way around my figure just like this. And essentially what I've done is I have created four right triangles. Here is a right triangle here, here is a right triangle here, here is a right triangle here, and here is a right triangle here. And we're pretty comfortable with using right triangles and finding missing links, right? Because these are rectangles, that, this is a rectangle that we just created, right? We know that those are right triangles. And the cool thing is on a coordinate grid, even though finding diagonal distances requires the distance formula, finding vertical and horizontal distances does not require that. I can literally just count. So I can say, all right, let me go find the length of this segment right over here by counting, I can say that's one, two, three, four, five, six units. This length right here is one, two, three, four units, okay? And since I know one of my legs is four units and the other leg is six units, all I have to do is find that missing hypotenuse and we know how to do that. We've been doing it all year long and you've done it even before my class, which is to use Pythagorean theorem. So what we want to do is use Pythagorean theorem to quickly find the length of this side. Now this is not a real world problem and nowhere in here does it say to round. So your final answer is likely going to have radicals in it, unless of course they simplify all the way through. So I'm gonna come over to the side and I am going to apply Pythagorean theorem. So I'm gonna say four squared plus six squared equals x squared, so we'll call that length x right over here. 
Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and let you solve that on your own, pause the video, um, and see what you get in radical form. And we'll simplify it together at the end. Now, when you solve for x, you'll get the square root of 52, hopefully. And if you didn't, then you want to make sure that you go and see um, where you went wrong. But it's pretty basic. You just add these up and then take the square root of both sides to get x by itself. Now, you might be tempted to leave it as square root of 52, but remember, we learned how to simplify radicals a long time ago. So what I want to do is I want to think to myself, I want to find factors of 52 where one of the factors is a perfect square, if possible. So hopefully you came up with 4 and 13. So I can rewrite square, square root of 52 as the square root of 4 times 13. Well, 4 is a perfect square, so I can take the square root of 4, which means this right here is actually 2 square roots of 13. And that's because the square root of 4 is 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this triangle right over here. So I'm going to find this length, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this width, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to go find, let's call this side Y. Now hopefully some of you realize that, hey, wait a second, a 6 and an 8, that's a multiple of a Pythagorean triple. Remember, we have 3, 4, 5s. When I multiply 3, I get, when I multiply 3 by 2, I get 6. When I multiply 4 by 2, I get 8. And when I multiply 5 by 2, I get 10. Now, if you didn't remember that, you would just have to go do Pythagorean theorem. No big deal. Next one, this small right triangle down at the bottom. This is a length of 2 and a length of 2. So same thing, 2 squared plus 2 squared equals, should we call this z? So same thing, go do that. And then I also want you to go find the length of that last segment in my quadrilateral as well, using that um, long, skinny right triangle. So I went ahead and found all the links. The only thing I left out was simplifying the um, radical. So whenever I'm trying to simplify radical 8, well, the square root of 8 can be split into the square root of 4 times 2. And the reason I picked 4 times 2 is because, of course, 4 is a perfect square. When I take the square root of 4, I get 2, which leaves me with 2 radical 2. So z equals 2 radical 2. And then same thing on that last segment that's in purple, square root of 104. I'm going to split that into 4 times 26. And the reason that I picked 4 times 26 instead of, say, um, 52 times 2 is because 52 is not a perfect square, neither is 2, whereas 4 is a perfect square. Okay, so when I take the square root of 4, I get 2, and so that leaves me with a is equal to 2 square roots of 26. Now all I have to do to find the perimeter is add up all of the sides, right? So perimeter equals, we did 2 square roots of 13 first. Plus 10. Plus 2 square roots of 2 plus 2 square roots of 26. Now notice that none of the um, segments have the same value under the radical, okay? And that tells me that these are not like terms, which means I cannot combine them. So actually, guess what? You stop here. You're just going to put parentheses and say units. And that's it for perimeter. Now, whenever we go find area, remember how I said that we are going to use um, these segments that we just created to also find the area. And the way that you're going to do that is by finding the area of the entire rectangle and then subtracting off the areas of those individual right triangles. 
And what that's going to leave you with is just the quadrilateral. Let me show you how that's going to work. So I'm going to find the area of this whole thing, okay? And I'm going to subtract off the area here. I subtract off the area here. I subtract off the area here. And I subtract off the area here. And if you notice, all that's left is the quadrilateral that I am looking for. So area equals area of rectangle minus the sum of all of the areas of the triangles. So area of triangle one plus area of triangle two plus area of triangle three plus area of triangle four. Okay, I find all of the areas of the triangles and I subtract it from the area of the rectangle. So remember the formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height and the, air, the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So area equals my base is, I'm just going to add this up, 10 plus 2 is 12. My height right here is 6 plus 2, which is 8. Minus, now i got to go find each of the rectangle, or each of the triangles. So 1 half base times height, or base times height divided by 2. So 6 times 4 divided by 2 plus 8 times 6 divided by 2 plus 2 times 2 divided by 2. And finally, plus 2 times 10 divided by 2. So notice how I'm finding the areas of each of those triangles, the green, blue, orange, and purple triangle, or triangle 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to subtract it off from the area of the entire rectangle. So that leaves me with area equals 96 minus, let's do each of these individually, 6 times 4 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. plus 8 times 6 is 48, divided by 2 is 24, plus 2 times 4, 2 times 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, and finally 2 times 10 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. And so let's finish up real fast. Area is equal to 96 minus, whenever I add all of those up, I get 48. And then 96 minus 48 is 48. Remember, this is area, so I'm going to say units squared. And that is it. So that is the reason that I created those re that big rectangle to begin with, so we could use those same values for perimeter and area. Now, if you're more comfortable just using distance formula to find perimeter, then by all means, you can do that. For area, you need to make sure that you are finding the exact area. This is not like an elementary school where we would you know, I remember I would say, okay, that's one, two, three. Ooh, that kind of looks like it matches with these two kind of go together. We don't do that, okay? We don't estimate like that because we need to make sure that we are finding the exact area. Now, we got lucky on this one and the area was 48 units squared. But imagine if it had been some relation with a radical. So you want to make sure you get the exact area. Okay, we're going to do one more example like this on number two. All right, I moved myself for this part of the recording so you guys could see the, all of the directions. So it says draw and classify the polygon with vertices E, which are at negative four comma one, F, which is at negative two comma three, and G, which is at negative two comma negative four. Then find the perimeter and area. So first, let me go ahead and plot those points. Negative four, so that's negative one, two, three, negative four comma one, negative two comma three, and negative two comma negative four. So when I connect those coordinates, that's E, F, and G. When I connect those coordinates, it is pretty clear with three points that this is going to be a triangle. Okay, and 
Let me go ahead and put a box around that to show that I answered that part of the question. And it says to find the perimeter and area. Well, all I have to do is create that rectangle around the figure. Okay, and I want to find the measures of each of those little segments. So I'm going to start by the easy one, right? That vertical length. So I'm going to start with this one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven units right over there. To find that short segment up at the top, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say, oh, this is two and this is two. Luckily for us, on the previous problem, we also had one where it was 2 and 2, and we ended up getting the answer is radical 8 because 2 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared, if of course this is x. That gives me 8, square root of 8 on both sides. So the square root of 8 can be rewritten as the square root of 4 times 2, and of course, 4 is a perfect square, which leaves me with 2 square roots of 2. Okay, so showing you where we got that from again. And then for that bottom one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 2. So 5 squared plus 2 squared equals y squared. 25 plus 4 is 29. When I take the square root of both sides, I'm left with, well, 29 is a prime number, so actually I won't even end up being able to simplify that. Square root of 29 is all that it is. So that right there is y. To find the perimeter, I just add up all of the sides. So p equals 7 plus 2 radical 2. plus radical 29. None of those radicands are the same, which means these are not like terms. So that is the perimeter. And then finally to find area, we are just going to find the area of the big rectangle and then subtract off those individual two right triangles. So area equals area of the rectangle minus area of triangle one plus area of triangle two. So the area of the rectangle is base times height. Well, my height is seven, my base is two minus one half base times height So 2 times 2 divided by 2 plus 5 times 2 divided by 2. So that leaves me with 14 minus 2 times 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 5 times 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So the area is equal to 14 minus 7, which is just 7 units squared. Now, on this one, if you had been thinking, okay, you had been a little bit more like, um, you would have thought more critically, there's actually a faster way to find the area on this one. What's the, what's the formula for the area of a triangle? One half base times height. And hey, guess what? Here is my base. And my height just has to be perpendicular to the base. And you guys, that length right there is perpendicular to the base, which is 2. 7 times 2 is 14. Divided by 2 is 7. Now, I did want to show it to you the long way because more often than not, if it's like, an odd figure, you are going to have to use this method. So I wanted to show it to you several times. Now on the back, we're going to find how we're going to see how do you find the area when they're not straight lines when we have curves. 
Now on this first example, just so we can get a handle on it, notice I have used straight lines. Um, and on the next example, example four, they are curves. So we'll show you how to approach that. It says find the area bounded by the function and the x-axis. So my x-axis is right here. Okay, notice I'm stopping and starting where my um, graph stops and starts. And I want to find this area here. Boom, 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 boom. Here. All right. So now if you notice, all this is is just a composite figure, right? Superimposed onto a coordinate plane. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. It's really not. And actually, the reason that we're even doing this lesson is because this is a really big concept for when you take calculus, okay? Finding areas under a curve is a really big concept in calculus. And we would find this area here, okay? Now, if, actually, let me rewind back. If, you, if I look at this, I can separate each of these parts of my graph into separate simple figures. For example, what I can do is I can create right here, you notice this is a trapezoid. Okay, here's my two parallel lines right here and right here. And this would be my height, which I know is weird. Um, we're not really used to having our height at the bottom. We're used to having it up and down. You're just gonna have to turn your paper maybe if that'll help or you can understand. Remember, my bases are parallel. So there's a trapezoid there that I can use to find mine, to find that area. Same thing, I can do another trapezoid and find this area. Let me go back over my pink one. And then I can do another trapezoid to find this area. I've got a parallelogram that's going to allow me to find this area here. Really, it's a square, but if I hadn't counted, I wouldn't know that. And then I have a triangle to help me find this area. And then I have one last triangle to find this area. So. Really, it's exactly what you did in 11.7. It's finding the areas of several simple figures, putting it together, it's a composite figure, right? The only difference is now that it's on a coordinate plane. But this is actually, I would say, even easier than what's on the front because if you notice, all of the links that I need to find are all vertical and horizontal distances. All I have to do is count, right? So. Let me write out the long formula so you can see what's kind of happening. So let's call this figure one. We'll call this figure two. Figure three. Figure four. Five. And six. Okay. And I just want to find each of those areas individually. When I add them up, I will get the area of my entire, um, the area of the region under the curve. Now, let's go ahead and do that and then I will show, talk to you a little bit about how that's gonna apply in whenever you take calculus. So we're gonna say area is equal to area of figure one plus area of figure two plus area of figure three, figure four, figure five, and figure six. Now, if it helps you to write out what each of those individual shapes are, then do that. And that's what I've done right over here. Um, and then, of course, we want our formulas, which for area of a trapezoid, and I usually just like to write it up at the top, area of trapezoid is equal to one half height, base one plus base two, area of square, is base times height or really side squared. Oops, let me move myself out of the way. And then area of triangle is one half base times height. So remember for the trapezoid, I told you earlier that the bases are the parallel sides. So whenever I'm talking bases, I'm talking 
this length and this length. And I'm talking height, I'm talking about that bottom side right over there. So that's gonna be equal to one half. My height is one, two, three, four. And my bases are one unit and one, two, three, four, five units. So one plus five. Then for my green trapezoid, I'm gonna do something very similar. One half, my base, my height is one, two, three. And my bases are again, five and one. For my purple trapezoid, same thing. One half, my height is one, two, three. Again, one of my bases is one, my other base is one, two. For my square, base times height, which is two times two. And for my two triangles, one half, my base is two, my height is two. And finally, again, one half, my base is two, my height is two. Now here is the thing, when you take calculus, if you have a figure right here below the x-axis, you're actually gonna end up counting that as a negative area, okay? But for our intents and purposes right now, we're going to just add up all of the areas together um, so we can just get that practice in. So all I have to do now is simplify each of these individual areas together. So I'm gonna do that, you do that as well. All right, hopefully for the individual pieces, you got 12, nine, four and a half, four, two, and two. So finally, when I add all of those together, I say my area is 33 and a half units squared. And that's it. So I'm basically just splitting this um, graph into several simple figures, finding them individually and adding them up, okay? Um, whenever y'all take calculus, you're gonna talk about something called Riemann sums, and this is gonna be something that you do quite a bit. Now let's take a look at the next example and see what the heck do we do if all of these shapes are not um, simple figures? What if it actually is a curve? Now, if you notice, the directions are a little bit different this time. This time it says approximate the area between the curve and the x-axis. So we're, gonna, we're doing the same thing, essentially. I want to find this area here, okay? This area in this region. That's what I'm looking for, okay? However, because of these curves, okay, we're not going to be able to find that area exactly. We are going to approximate. And we're going to approximate using a method called um, the trapezoid method, okay? We are going to create several trapezoids and find the areas of, uh, find the areas of the trapezoids, which is going to allow me to approximate the area between the curve and the x-axis. Let me show you how that's going to work. So at that point, I'm going to draw down my base. At this other point, I'm going to draw down my other base. This right here is my height. And notice when I create that trapezoid, see how I'm barely off of my curve? That's gonna get me a really good approximation for that segment of my uh, curve. So this right here is three, this right here is two, this right here is one, two, three, four, five. So I can find the area of the full thing by finding the area of that trapezoid which we will call trapezoid one. Okay. Or let's just call it one because we're only gonna be using trapezoids. And I can create another trapezoid just like this. I'm gonna draw down another base, another height, and then here's my base again. 
And again, do you see I'm barely off right over there? Okay, now because that one's more rounded, my approximation is a, not as good, but not bad either. So again, this length is five, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my other base is six, and my height is three. So that's gonna be trapezoid two. So plus the area of trapezoid two. And now I'm gonna create one last trapezoid right over here. And this one is also not gonna be a great approximation, but it'll be better than us just counting because that curve is quite big. And I'm using a bigger width, right? The smaller widths that I get, the sm or sorry, the smaller heights that I use, the better my approximation is going to be. But because this was at an exact coordinate, that's why we chose at that point. So here we go. This is my trapezoid three. Same thing, length. My base is six. One, two, three, four, five. My height is five. And my other base is three. So plus the area of trapezoid three. So again, my formula for area of a trapezoid is one half. My height, which is two, and I add my bases, three and five. Plus, I do it again for my green trapezoid, trapezoid two, which is one half. My height is three, my bases are five and six. And finally, trapezoid three which is one half, my height is five, my bases are six and three. I'm gonna add all of those up together, or let's do them individually first. Half of two is one, and then one times eight is just eight, plus Five plus six times three divided by two is gonna be 16 and a half or 16.5, either way works. And finally, my last trapezoid is going to be 22 and a half or 22.5. So that tells me my final area is 47 units squared. Well, let's say approximately 47 units squared. And that is it.